Welcome everybody to Greater Life, Greater Impact. I am here with my good friend, Stephen Baker, who calls himself Baker Man. We, for those of you who are in the in the LDS community, you know um, a place in Missouri called Adam on Diamond. And I was there about a year, a year and a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. And that's where we met and yeah. became fast friends. So <clears throat> we were over, a friend of mine and I were over at Baker Man's home. Um, just about a week or two ago. It was very nice having you there. It was nice. We had a great visit. And while we were there, we talked about the concept and the topic of subconscious self-love. And I said, oh my gosh, I need you to share this with the people who participate with me on these weekly classes every Tuesday. So um, today we are talking about subconscious self-love. This is something that everybody should be interested in, eagerly interested in, because I believe this is the key to life. This is the key to everything good in your life. It's the key to um, experiencing love. It's the key to allowing yourself to be loved by God and by others. I believe it's the key to um, receiving love from other people, but also giving love. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. I'm going to let Stephen Baker share some of his experiences with us, how he got on this trajectory, how he got onto this path. And then we're going to give you guys towards the end of the class, we're going to give you guys um, some tools and some resources for how you can grow in your level of self-love. Ask any questions you want, because we're like open books. (laughs) Yes, we are. So I, I, before we get into that, I'm going to share a little experience. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed I've been mentoring now for a little over 10 years. And one of the things that I've noticed as I've worked with people, and those of you who are also healers, you may notice that is, this as well. But when you start doing your inner work, when you really start going within and cleaning that inner vessel and overcoming the lower level emotions that this world can throw at you, and you start to transcend that stuff, then you you begin to realize how much more authentic you become and um, how vital it is to return home to that place of self, the true self. I mean, that is the essence of healing. It's the essence of connecting with God. It's the essence of connecting with yourself um, is that self-love. And anywhere inside of you where you're storing disapproval or lack or I'm not enough, Um, usually that's where most illnesses, most problems, most challenges that we have to overcome are rooted in, I'm not enough somehow, some way. So if you can find where the roots of the I'm not enoughs are being stored in you and resolve that, um, that's where healing happens. That's where the magic happens. That's where abundance lives. That's where God lives. So with that, I'm going to Turn some time over to you, Stephen, to share. I think she already said everything I was going to say. <laughs> no, I didn't. And I think the the that she mentioned about the little forgiveness thing, um, that was really I think uh, in any kind of healing, there's there's this little thing about forgiveness, forgiving on the outside and forgiving on the inside. And if you've really been done hard to, it's almost impossible to forgive anybody yeah. because you have to ask for help for that one. You say, God, please give me uh, the help to forgive somebody because I don't really have it in me to forgive it. And so, but then you got to. Uh, she just helped me with forgiving myself for some things. So I thought, oh, that's really sweet. So just when she came, she helped me with the healing of uh, something about my own self forgiveness um, through some ex-wives and some children and this and that. So yeah. it's uh, really helpful. And I feel my heart's a lot happier. So. Can you, would you be willing to share your story on how you came about this, this process of learning about subconscious self-love mm-hmm. and where did it begin for you? Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I, I kind of went through an identity crisis at uh, this in my later part of this life, uh, just within the last year or two, too, because the world is telling me I got to be this and I got to have my millions and I've got to have this and I got to be extraordinary educated and I've got to have more money and more money and bigger and nicer things. And so I was feeling kind of put upon by my culture and my society that I'm not measuring up. So there we go. One of the not measuring up things. And uh, so I went through that and I, and I finally found some answers, but I had to ask questions first. So I think to really, truly get where you want to go, you got to ask the right questions. So my first question to you is, um, um, how are you doing with your um, yourself love on the deepest level? Um, uh, Bruce Lipton said, and I was watching a YouTube, he said that 80 to 90% of people do not love themselves 
subconsciously. Okay, so this is a subconscious, okay. So I visualize that as kind of being like an iceberg. There's the part we put on the front, on the outside, but there's this beautiful big old iceberg underneath the layer, underneath the water, and that's where we store in all this subconscious part. Mm -hmm. So we really don't get to see that. I don't get to see your subconscious. You don't get to see my subconscious, but we, you can pick up on it because you can usually tell somebody are not too happy with themselves. You know, they probably got some got some issues and going to need to deal with something. So, um, so I he said Bruce Lipton says that eighty to ninety percent of people got don't have a hundred don't have a hundred percent self love. So I checked with the big boss. I said I got mine though, don't I? Because I've been working on this for a long time. He said, nope, you don't. I go, oh, really? I don't. So sometimes you go to the creator and he shows you that he shows you your weakness. And he says, if you're humble and you're willing to work on a little bit, that he'll make it your strength. So this is what I've decided. I would like to have some strength in that area. Um, but that doesn't matter so much. The most important thing is you are the greatest. You yourself is the great your own greatest gift. There's nothing greater than yourself for a gift. So you want to make, you want to, you may want to have a look at this self-love thing. And it's a, like, it's a subconscious thing. So um, in, he was telling me that there might be a need to see a hypnotherapist. So I went down to Liberty Hypnotherapy and to the lady named Wendy and I paid $80. And I told her when I came in, I says, you know, all I want is my self-love on a subconscious level. Cause I'm going to get into my subconscious. And I'd like to get this, this thing going. Cause I could feel like I needed some help. So uh, I went through it and I was a little disappointed um, because uh, uh, anyway, uh, I saw signs when I was in this hypnotherapy, I saw these big labels that says, you're not this, you're this, you're that all these, and they were real psychedelic labels. And I thought, you know, this is what we do. We label each other. We criticize each other. Um, we, we put each other in boxes. She's that she's his, he's that he's this, I'm this, I'm that. And we don't fit in any boxes because there's not two of you to, re to, there's not two of you to, to compare yourself to, you know, that don't you think, I mean, there's not, there's not two Janets. No, no. there's, she's there the one and there's only one Janet <laughs> and she's not two of them. So I'm not Janet. She's not me. <laughs> we can't compare ourselves in any way because she's her separate, her, I'm my separate self. And um, I'm just lucky if I can make myself the best self I can be. That's my goal is the creator, dear God, please bless me that I can be my best self. So this has been a journey I've been on to help me be my best self. And uh, I don't measure up very well uh, to other, other people. I'm not, I don't even try to go there because I'll be way behind the, way behind the, the um, way behind on some things. Plus we know that's the definition for pride is, is wherever there's enmity, you know, if you're, if you fall above somebody else or below somebody else, that gap equals pride. So, well, that's a good point. The pride and I, God woke me up a sound sleep and says, Esteem no man better above another. So that means President Trump and me, we're pals. Yeah. Or Bush or whoever, you know, we're all the same. Nobody's better than anybody else. We're all family on the earth. There's no better. And even, even my buddies on the street that are homeless, they're the same as me. They're not better than me and they're not worse than me. Yeah. So it's taken some time to get that kind of sorted out. So share the experience that you had, this epiphany that you had with this uh, hypnotherapist. Okay. So I went to the hypnotherapist. She immediately decided to dive into this self-love thing. Right. What, what was the question? Oh, keep going. Okay. So we dove into it and it worked out pretty good. And and then when I left, I felt really kind of disappointed because I didn't think we got anything done. So I mean, a little bit of nothing, you know, I didn't really think that was very effective. So, but I, but I, I noticed immediately that things changed. So I went across the street to the Wendy's hamburger place and people started inviting me to dinner at the Wendy's hamburger place. They want me to come sit with them. I'm going, I never have people come up to me and say, I'd like you to sit with you. So something, I knew something had shifted because now people want me to come sit with them. I go, okay. And I did. And it was kind of fun. And we visited back and forth a little. And then uh, I went home and I checked a muscle test. When you tell the truth, it's really strong. If you lie, you, it's weak. So I had, I had, I came home and I had 53% self-love. That was it. I had 54. No, it breaks on 54. I broke it at 52. So it was 53. So I had 53% self-love. That's muscle, muscle testing is when it's the truth, it's strong. Okay. So I only had 53%. So I told mother about it and she got all excited. And, uh, but I couldn't still figure out how I'm going to get with the rest of my percentages. Then mom says, she says, I'm not going to go see a hypnotherapist. I'm just going to ask the creator who gave me life to help me get hers. She's going to get hers. 
So my mom is 88 years old and now she has 100% self-love and she just asked the creator, your God, the creator who gave me life, please give me some self-love. And she did over less than 30 days. My mom grew it little by little, about two to three percentages a night. And pretty soon she had her 100% self-love. And I did the same. And we found that when we got the 100% self-love, things were shifted a whole lot. For like example, when you look in the mirror and say your name, say, Janet, I love you. Then you hear a little voice back. I, I say, Baker, I love you. And I hear a little voice. Oh, no, you don't, you dirty liar. <laughs> you see, because my subconscious ain't going to let ain't gonna let me love myself. Because it's I, I just don't love myself because I criticize myself. I put my T-shirt on backwards. See that little V T-shirt? <laughs> I call myself a dumb shit just because I put my T-shirt on backwards. <laughs> see, so anyway, I'm just saying, you see what I'm saying is that, is that, is that, that we're very critical of ourselves. Mom says you can criticize at a drop of a hat. But it's very difficult. It's very difficult to, what do you say, mom? Uh, it's You criticize at a drop of a hat, but it's hard to to be thankful. Yes. It's hard to just have the thankfulness. So the real secret to life is to have thankfulness. Thankful that you're unique. You're the one and only you. There's not, you're not two of you to compare yourself to. You cannot compare yourself to another single human being in all the world. It doesn't matter if you have big fancy cars or little mopeds. It all, you're all the same in the love, in the eyes of the creator who gave you life. Now you have special gifts that are given to you. And that's where you want to expand on your, your own personal gifts. So that's my biggest thing is let's expand on our personal gift. The greatest, one of the greatest gifts is of course, your self-love on a subconscious level. Any questions about that? Yeah, I love that. If you guys have questions, you can drop them down below. But I I, I want to go back to this comparison thing because I think this is so vital. Um, <clears throat> we as human beings do get caught up in comparing ourselves to other people and looking, you know, looking outward and seeing that we don't measure up or maybe that we think we're better than someone. And, um, and that is usually rooted in I'm not enough somewhere. And if you are not enough to the degree that you love yourself is to the same degree that you're going to feel that connection to God and the connection to other people. And it's to the same degree that you'll be able to spill that love out onto other people. So I feel like, gosh, this is one of the most important factors I think of self-love is letting go of criticism, self-criticism. Well, that's the truth. Shauna says, did you only have self-love given by the creator or did you have to let go of something? That's a good question. Okay. I think, I think I've been on a mission for at least uh, 16 years ago. I decided to live life from the inside out rather than the outside in. So that was a huge shift. I thought, okay, the new car, the new, the new girlfriend, the fancy, this, the fancy, that is all outside, like fancy clothes. This is my, my fanciest clothes. I wore my very fanciest shirt, um, but that's outside stuff. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really make me who I am. I'm completely different. I can wear, I can wear paint shirts with, you know, I can wear anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this is just for the, you know, I'm mean, this first time I've ever been on tube, whatever. So I thought I'd dress up a little so I could, you know, be famous or something, but it doesn't make me no difference. But anyway, going back to what I just got sidetracked. What was the question again? <laughs> she asked you, so was self-love given to you by the creator or did you have to let go of something? Okay. I, I think I had to make, I think I first had to become aware of the fact that I didn't have as much as I'd like to have. So muscle testing, um, we checked on some, some friends and some people that thought they had a lot and really the subconscious is there's two self loves. Okay. There's the outside. If you live in a loving home where all your husband gives you a big kiss every morning when you wake up and shines all this adornment on you, then your kids do the same. Of course, you're going to have outside self-love, lots and lots of outside self-love. So external approval. External approval. You're going to just think you got all the love in the world. Look at um, um, my Elvis Presley, for example. I mean, he had the most approval. He's the king of the rock and roll. I checked on him. He didn't even have 20% self-love. You know, you can check, you can check yourselves. Yeah. He didn't have, he never, never got over 20% self-love in his life. So, but he's famous, you know, he's the most famous, one of the most famous singers in the whole world. So, and I check on a lot of famous people. But one of the people who do have hundred percent self-love is a lady named um, Louise Hay. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Body. And she's a delightful human being that had struggled through a lot of struggle. But when you check, she'll find that she has over hundred percent self-love. 
So she's a she's a jewel to be able to she's it's exciting that she got it somehow. So she might be somebody to talk to. So you can go around check and check on people, ask God, the greater, please give you the absolute truth. Muscle test, it's gonna be positive. You're gonna know what people's self-loves are and find a hundred percent people and then ask them, ask them how they got their hundred percent. So let's do it right now. So what I want you guys to do is um, if you do muscle testing, you do the muscle testing the way that works best for you, the way that that Steven does it is like this. Oh, you like, you do like yeah. this. Yeah, so I, it, I'm a muscly guy. So I like to, if my name is Steven Baker, it's really strong. If I say my name is Donald Duck, it breaks real easy. So I, my name is Steven Baker, Donald Duck. See how easy that breaks? So anyway, I can, anyway, I, it, it it's really easy. So I have a hundred percent self-love. It's strong. I don't, I don't, I've lost my self-love. No, I didn't lose my self-love. So I got my hundred percent subconscious self-love. I have it now. So I check and I, I have, but that doesn't help me. It doesn't help you for me to have it. So I'm more interested in you. So what you want you to do is say your real name and it, it'll be strong. Then make up a name like my name is Sally and it'll break right away. My name is, you know, and then if you say your real name again and say another name that's wrong and it'll break real easy. So now then you go your numbers. I do it by tens. So now if you all want to check on yourselves, this is a great opportunity. So you say you got over 50%. There's nobody on this call that has over 50% self-love except me, <laughs> unfortunately, but not compare myself to you, but I had to do this little thing. So, you know, it, you'll have yours within 30 days. So I'm just going to say, join the 30 day club. You'll have yours within 30 days. Don't sweat it. You know, it can't, the oak told me the other day, he says, you think you're a mighty oak, but you're not, you're just a nut. And I go, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm a nut, but I'm going to be a mighty oak someday. So I'm working on it. And it's a lot of life is just a journey to grow. So don't worry about where you are in your growth. If you got 5%, 10%, 100%, 20%, doesn't really matter that much. As long as you're willing to grow, this is what we're really after. Okay, so we've got a couple of um, questions. Nicole, okay, Alicia says, <clears throat> I got 70%. So Alicia, I had that too. When I first muscle tested, I was at like 75%. And then I realized that was conscious. That was conscious self-love. So when we muscle tested together, when I got to the baker's home, it was what? 20, 23. 23. 23 or 24. But this is subconscious self-love. Subconscious. So you need to ask specifically, what is my subconscious self-love level? And um, and so I've increased mine to 33. Yeah. she. I checked on her way over here. She's at 33. So she's, she's growing hers just like a flower will grow, just like a tree will grow, like everything else will grow. It's uh, you put out that energy, you recognize you'd like to grow it and it, it you find that it you can grow it. And even at 77, if that was correct and you just happen to have 77 self-love on the inside as well as the outside, then you still got some room for growth because you really want to get to the 100 percent. So then in the name of Christ, I would ask for that God will bless you, that you'll be able to grow your self-love over the next 30 days. Everybody on this call and anybody who hears this call that you'll be blessed within 30 days to receive your 100% self-love on a subconscious level. I pray that over you all because I know God, the creator who gave you life, wants that for you because he wants his children to be happy and fulfilling and be abundantly blessed. I absolutely know that for certain. So thank you. Thank you, God, for that gift to your kids. Yeah, there you. you go. There's a little okay. prayer for you. So that's how he started was he, he tested where am I at? Um, where would I like to be? I would like 100% inner subconscious self-love. This is not at a conscious level or an external level because that's different. You're going to get different answers. So, and then he just set the intention, prayed the prayer that I'm I'm going to choose to intend to increase my subconscious self-love by 3% every night when I'm sleeping or every day when I'm, when I'm in my waking life and my day, I'm going to catch myself if I'm ever criticizing myself or if I'm ever comparing myself, I'm going to catch that and weed that out of my life. Very good. So change the habits, change, changing the thoughts, changing the habits. Somebody says, what if you struggle with muscle testing? Um, then get somebody else that's real confident in it and let them be uh, your, your, your help. Will you muscle test for Nicole? Yes. Nicole, uh, um, God absolutely loves you. Guess what? He really does. He created you. I can test I could, I bet you could never break that with, I bet five, five, um, five big old, um, those guys that throw the football around, they couldn't drag you out of that, out of that love that God has for you. It's absolutely amazing how much love God has for you. 
Okay, I promise you that for certain. So now that's not the issue is how much God loves you. It's how much do you, do you feel his love on a subconscious level, on a very deep subconscious level, on the most heart of hearts, in your heart of hearts. Okay, so you have over 50%. You do not have, you have over 40%, Nicole. You have over 30%. Actually, you're doing pretty darn good. You're at 30 some percent, 31, 32, 30. You could double check on her too. Did you get to get the same number? Because I always like to get people to check. Does she have over 30? She has over 30. You have over 30. And she's checking in. So you go, anyone, 31, 32, about 32. That's okay. that what she, she's got 32. See, I, I just, I got 32. She got 32. Yeah. Now you got two people, but you can double back and you can, you know, we don't have to go with what we say. You know, it, you can check for yourself. But, um, but the truth is going to be strong is, but you have to get, build your confidence in that. Cause when I first started out, I didn't have a lot of confidence, but I've been doing this for about 30 years, this muscle testing thing. And boy, it comes out 99% of the time it's right on. So, um, so I, my confidence is extremely high in what I'm told through, uh, at checking with a higher, a higher, the higher power God, I ask him, please show me by making me strong on the right issue for my highest and greatest good. So that's where I go. So you can set the intention now um, that that for the next 30 days, by 30 days, you'll be at 100%. And you can check in every other day and just muscle test. Keep a keep a little three by five card or a notebook or somewhere where you can keep track of where you're at and just watch it grow. Watch yourself become more conscious and more aware of your self-love levels and your... Um, subconscious you know, that subconscious deep inner love that you have for yourself um karen says oh crap i don't seem to have any could you muscle test karen? okay karen uh, uh, that's okay the negativity jumped in there so we need to clear you okay so dear god in the name of jesus please clear her of any negative entities or liars or deceivers or hitchhikers and that way she can get the truth so sometimes you have to clear yourself uh, of any kind of negatives because they of course they'll lie to you right and they, any kind of hitchhikers can lie to you so you gotta have to clear out the hitchhikers then you'll get the truth so that wait I'll, I'll give you a little time you can double check on yourself um you should get a different answer once you get your clear clearing okay okay so okay thank you thank you god and always say your thank yous whenever god gives you a blessing you receive it if you say thank you if i give you an apple and you drop it on the ground it won't really be a thank you. But if you receive it and you say thank you, now you received it. So I always love to thank God. And I never ask him for much. I always thank him for giving me what I haven't received yet. And that's true faith and true power. So if you really want to really have a really extraordinary address, you can start thanking God right now for your 100% self-love. Everybody on this thing should be thanking God. Thank you, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for 100% self-love. And now you now you put everything in motion because now you've already received it and it's now it's just going to grow. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. We've got another question, comments. Someone okay. says, experience a lot of religious abuse. It's hard to believe that God wants me to love myself, even though intellectually I know it's not the case. Can you speak on that? Yes. Uh, we have a tendency to to shake our fist at God sometimes because we we receive a lot of pain through religious um religious abuse uh when we think of, it's like me telling you i love you and then slapping you and after a while if you've been slapped enough times you really don't think i love you at all and and religion has a way of doing that sometimes to us making so we don't feel like we measure up we're not good enough and those kind of things i've experienced some of the same and uh i know exactly how you feel that way i have empathy for that and compassion for that um um so uh, get back to the original question again. Let's go back to it. Yeah, because I got to hear the question one more time. I got a little side. So religious side abuse, you address that. It's hard to believe that God wants me to love myself, even though intellectually I know that's not the case. So she's she's trying okay. to, Let's, to come to that. I'm going to give you a little story. My my son was uh, just served uh, as a missionary in in um, 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 the place that this little little um, it's a little Irish. Irish, it's just called an Irish um, um, not Trinity knot. Anyway, it comes from Ireland. And uh, he served in Ireland. And uh, when he was there, he saw God. He actually got to see God. And um, he saw God and, and, and he kissed each one of his children and he wept. He wept huge tears of, of 
just tears, just wept over each child as he, they came down to earth because he knew it was going to be so damn hard. And uh, I think that's the thing that, that you might be experiencing. You might be experiencing that extremely difficult situation of coming to earth um, and, and having to find the answers, you know, where are you going to find the answers? How are you going to, how are you going to accomplish this? See? So I, my heart goes out to that, but I do know how you're going to find the answers you're going to have to, you're going to have to do it this way. Uh, you can say a little prayer. Those that don't believe in God, say a little prayer. God, if you're really there, would you let me know? Would you let me know? That's all you have to do. Just say a little prayer like that. God, if you're really there, would you just let me know? See, that would be how I, that's how I begin your journey. And what would you say? So her question was, it's hard for me to understand that God wants me to love myself. So, so say, just ask a little prayer, say, God, if you're really there, would you please let me know if it's important for me to have self-love? There you go. There's a, there's a, a simple little prayer. You'll get your answer. I promise you'll get your answer within two weeks. You'll have your answer within a couple of weeks. If you're, if you're consistent, you'll get your answer probably within a couple of days. But uh, definitely within two weeks, you'll have your answer. You will absolutely for certain have your answer and you'll get it on the inside, not us on the outside. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go. Shauna so. says, I love your charming way of taking off your hat to lay the blessing okay. on your head. Oh, but it, but it's it's pretty bald. <laughs> I mean, I could land a, I can land a helicopter on top of that pad right there. But uh, oh, but let me tell you what happens. They told me that if I was, go bald in the front, I'm a thinker. If I go bald back here, I'm a lover. So if I go ball both places, I think I'm a lover. <laughs> anyway, it's just a joke I heard of it. So I must think I'm a lover anyway. Karen says, okay. thank you for that prayer. Subconscious was 30%. Alicia, okay. good, good. That's really good. Thanks for the clarification. Nicole says, yes, thank you for praying over us. Ashley says, would it be possible to test me okay. um, away Ashley. from my family? Okay, Struggle. yes, uh, you can call. You can call. Uh, do you have a phone number to let the people call you? Yeah. Okay. She has. She has a. And and I can verify any number if you want to have a second opinion. She don't even have to tell me. I'll check it and we'll get the exact same number for you. If you would like the number, we can give you a number away from your family. Call. Call and ask to give a verification. Check for yourself first. Then we'll verify your number for you. Do you want to do away it right from, now? But she said away from her family. So is her family watching? Oh. Is that what you were meaning, Ashley? Um, would it be possible to, oh, I'm away from my family. Yeah, you can just call me. Yeah. Or, or reach out to me on Facebook. And, yeah. And we will, let me write your name down. Yeah, we, we, we Sorry, love. Sorry, I'm, I'm here. I, I unmuted me. Oh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, I, I've, um, I've been really struggling with my self-love. I had a nervous breakdown two years ago, ended up in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I... <laughs> I've just I've gone through a lot of trauma um sure. my family doesn't quite understand how to help me I it's been affecting my health so like it's hard to walk mm -hmm. it's hard to talk at times sleep um and so I'm away from my family with my mom during the week and then I visit them on the weekends um but I just have so much anxiety <laughs> Right. Because I just don't ever feel like I'm good enough. <laughs> right. Or, that's, uh, and I that's feel the frozen because of the, the criticism, the criticism yeah. that I yeah. get when I hit home. And so I'm like, right. I know that these things are true. I know that this self-love concept is so true. And I know that it would help my girls, especially if I can get to us and my husband, if I can really love myself and take care of myself again you bet girl that you got it going on you, and this is the first step so we don't ever measure a journey by how by getting there at the first it's uh, just one step so yeah. just by uh, being aware of it is your first step mm -hmm. so that and god will bless you sweetie um absolutely for certain you'll get your 100 percent, and everybody around you will just see a miracle because all of God's creation is made with love. And when you come to that 100% self-love, now you're in complete harmony with that vibration of all creation. Mm -hmm. And everybody will notice it. You won't even have to say a word, but I can promise you there will be a huge change. One of my friends just got her 100%. She came to visit uh, that I had not met before. I'd never met her before. She came to our house and spent a day or two, um, her and her husband on the way from Florida to back to Idaho. And she got her 100% while we at our house. So we was extraordinarily excited for her. 
And uh, anyway, so we we will champion you. We'll pray for you. We know for certain you'll get it. There's absolutely no question you'll get it. Uh, if you intend to and you want it, you will get it. Would you like us to muscle test for you right now, Ashley? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really okay. So you you got over you got over thirty percent. You don't. You have over twenty percent. You don't. You have over ten percent. Yes, you do. You got over 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You're right at fourteen. That's what I got. To have her double check. It could be thirteen. It could be fifteen. But you'll you'll know that the strong will be the right number, and the other two will be weak. So now she'll verify and tune it in a little bit. So I'm getting fifteen. So she's getting fifteen. So see, you got more than what I thought she had. So she's getting 15. I'm going to double check on 15. Yeah, I still get strong on 15. Then she got 16. I got that you don't have 16, yeah. but you do have 15. So see, she gave you a little bit more than I did, but I was trying to be ballpark real quick. And I would I would, I would, would say if you check with the creator and you don't still test for yourself, you should be right at 16, which is a good number. It's a good place to start. You at least know you're on the 16th step, right? You got a ladder to climb, but you don't have to do it. See, what's so exciting about this, you get to do this in your sleep. You don't have to tell your heart to be, you don't have to tell your lungs to breathe. You don't have to tell, you know, you don't have to talk to your heart to tell it to, to beat. You don't have to talk to your lungs to tell them to breathe. The same with the self-love, it'll grow while you're sleeping. Isn't that exciting? God will heal you while you're asleep. So just before you go to bed, say the little prayer. What's your name, sweetie? Ashley. Ashley, Ashley. dear God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Ashley. Please help her to get the 100% self-love beginning this very night. Before she goes to bed, she'll have asked you for that self-love and then she'll grow it. And tomorrow morning, she'll have more than she had when she went to sleep the night before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for this extraordinary blessing for your sweet daughter that you adore and love more than anyone in this, anyone else. I mean, more than anybody else in her life, you love her more, more the most. Thank you, dear God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The creator loves you the most and he wants your very best. That's all I can say. Yeah. And you know, Thank what's you. amazing about that is that you are this love. You are the highest levels of love than you, than you can even fathom or imagine. And as you come into the awareness and the consciousness of the I am within you, um, there's no comparison to that. It's and let's, uh, I'd like to do one more thing for you, sweetie. Um, you picked up a liar and the little liars and they're called hitchhikers. And so the liar is telling you not that you're on, you're not good and you're and all these lies you've been listening. So in the name of God, in the name of Christ, I ask for a blessing on Ashley that she can uh, that all the hitchhikers, all the liars, deceivers, unclean spirits, evil spirits, negative energies will depart and be free. She'll be free from all those, and that they'll have to leave and put up a shield around her that she can be that she can so that she can grow her self love with with your nourishing nourishing love, dear God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That prayer is special for you, Ashley. Thank you, God, for blessing her. Okay. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, Minnie says, received a lot of family. <clears throat> Those that are supposed to always love you, how do you overcome believing them and start believing God? Well, um, my one friend has been in a relationship with his wife, and she cheated on him over and over and over, and and he would just feel so, so beat up. And um, I told him one day, I says, you know, if you go to the door and you get punched in the nose every single time you go to the door, maybe you ought to not open that same door every single time. So I know we love our families, but if they're too abusive to us, we may have to close the door just for our own self-love. Um, ask God, you know, it, it, to help you to reconcile with it. Because really, the, the Holy Spirit said he will show you all things you should do. So really, you need to go to God and then you ask him, he will show you all things that you can do. And he'll help you to to reconcile the abuse that you've had from your family. And uh, and we know that love is as love does. So if they say they love you and they're really abusive to you, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not really, it's not, it's not authentic is all I'm saying. And mostly if you check, you'll find out they don't have any self-love anyway. Because I had a guy steal a horse from me this morning. I checked on him and he only had 5% self-love. So I decided, well, that's what I would expect from somebody who only has five self love, but they'd steal a horse from you, right? So I'm a, I have to forgive him because he only has five percent self love. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, and and then, and then it can open up the door to compassion. Right, and so just have have compassion for the family members. The mom said that mom says there's a a, um, a scripture that says love God with all thy heart, love thy neighbor as thyself. But most of the time we forget the part about thyself. 
So we're out there trying to love our neighbor. We're running around with an empty bucket trying to love our neighbor. We're trying to love our neighbor when we only have an empty bucket. And it's Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 36 is the first great commandment and the law. The first great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But everybody's on the bandwagon to love the neighbor when I'm running over there with an empty bucket and I'm only, you know, I'm only, I'm dragging a bucket with 5%. How on the heck am I going to help that neighbor? Because I, I couldn't even put a fire out with that, with 5% bucket. And it, I got a hole in the darn thing because I criticized myself. So what we're going to do is we want to get your love bucket filled up with 100% self-love. That's my goal. That's why I'm on this thing. Please, God, please bless everybody with 100% self-love on a subconscious level. And we're going to go with the creator who gave you life to get that. How does that sound? Yeah. Ask every night before you go to bed for 30 days. And I promise you, God says you have not because you ask not. So if you ask, you're going to receive. I promise you. I promise you, you're going to ask and you shall receive. That's awesome. Okay. okay. So Alicia says, I wonder if this fun, wonderful guest, Stephen, um, don't know your name, she says, I wonder if his self-love has made it so easy for others to love him. I just think he's so wonderful, sweet, and easy to love straight away. Janet too. Absolutely. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just interesting to think that loving yourself opens yourself up to more love and loving others. I just feel so much love energy from both of you and bringing well, you. God in too has been powerful. Well, we know the world doesn't want to acknowledge the creator who gave them life, but you know, if you don't believe in God, then all you have to do is hold your breath for three minutes. And I promise you, you'll have to believe in God. Because as soon as you as soon as you pass out, guess who's going to keep you breathing again? God is going to start your breath to going again for you. That's one of my favorite things. If you don't believe in God, just hold your breath for three minutes. And guess what? You'll pass out and you'll start breathing again because God is keeping you with your breath of life. That's perfect. Mia says, I have to leave. Do you record that? Yes, I'll record this and we'll put it up on the YouTube channel, Greater Life, Greater Impact. Um, what else? That prayer was so beautiful. That was from Karen. Thank you. Um, thank you, Bakerman, for teaching me subconscious self-love. This is Lisa. <laughs> subconscious self-love. A few weeks ago, I feel a huge difference. What a gift to the world. Hugs. We love you, Lisa. Yeah. I and I have to say, you know, just in the last few weeks, as as we've been aware of this and asking for it and seeking for it, intending for it. Um, I feel a change, a difference. I, I feel happier. There you go. That's what we noticed too. Yeah. We're much happier. Kind of like little kids in the play in the in the sandbox. You know, once you get this love for yourself, you you just you just want to play in the sandbox. Have fun. Yeah. So do you have any stories that you could share of people that you've taught this principle to of growing your self-love in 30 days so that you can go from where you're at to 100% subconscious self-love. Do you have any stories? Yeah, the very first story would be my mom. She's 88 years old, and she raised nine children. And I'm the I'm the black sheep of the family. So I, I'm proud to say uh, I'm trying to get my, my wool a little whiter all the time. And that, though my sins are be at scarlet, they will be white as snow. So I'm excited that I'm going to get my sheepskin changed up to white instead of black. But anyway, um, um, as soon as I came home with the 53%, mom seen that I was doing better. She decided she's going to go for it. So we had two people in the same house that had 100% self-love. We were so thrilled. Man, I can't even tell you. My it smiles. My mom's happier every day. She comes to the table. She's happier. She's happier all day. Um, even when we have trauma, it, it goes away really, really quickly. The hitchhikers don't jump on you real quick. Um, you know, negative entities don't jump on you very fast because you got your hundred percent. Then after me, then I got my brother, he lives in Torrance, California, him and his wife, they both decided to go for theirs. They had a 20%. They have a hundred percent now and they're weightlifters. My, you know, they're in the alum like my, my, my sister-in-law has a, is the international gold medalist for bodybuilding. I mean, international, I mean, she's really got the gold, big old hunk and gold medal, but she didn't have a hundred percent self-love, but she has now. So that was exciting, even though she's in the limelight and everybody adores her because she got her gold medal. They go over Australia and, and Japan and she, the international gold medalist. Isn't that cool? The outer doesn't always reflect the inner. Yeah, this is what we're learning. And But anyway, she's grown hers to 100% and we're just so excited for them. Um, other people right after that, those are the first four that I was acquainted with. 
Then one of my neighbors, he's growing his. Um, one of my very favorite neighbors, he's growing his. Lots of my neighbors are growing theirs. Um, a little girl that was working at the restaurant um, in my local town, um, she was at 7%. Now she's at 60. Oh, my gosh, you can't believe I... I just said, you're growing yourself love, aren't you? And she says, yep, I am. <laughs> and, and has she noticed any changes in her life? Uh, I don't know, but I can see it plain as day. Boy, everybody around her can see it. She's just glowing, man. I go, this is this lady's on. She's lit up. She's all happy again. Yeah. Before she was just, yeah. you know, stepping on her lower lip. You know, now she's not stepping on her lower lip no more. Yes. And it's it's a beautiful thing to see. And it's okay. Where, we, where you are, just be happy you're where you are because the creator is very mindful of where you are. He's not He's not condemning you. He's not, you know, putting you down. He's He's saying, here, let me take your hand and I want to nurture you. And I love you so much. Yeah. I want to nurture you. I want you to have 100%, 100% subconscious self-love. I know for certain he wants you to have it. Yeah, this is that's healing. This is at the mm -hmm. root of healing. I saw that Toby Lynn had her hand up. Um, Toby Lynn, do you still have something that you wanted to share or... A comment, a question. I'll just give you. I do actually. I um. How do I put it? I come to realize I, I was examining myself the other day, and going, okay, what do I have to heal? And one of the things I come to realize is that I've used pride to support myself through a lot of trauma. I've been like I said, you know, I've been through a lot of abuse, and I love myself. I I had to learn to love myself. However. I notice that this this pride keeps me from wanting people to love me because of the things that I've gone through. Afraid of love. Um, Good. And I'm so being I'm, a little bit afraid of love. Did you say? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, um, the, the been... terminology "love" is really a sticky. The terminology of "love" is really sticky. In America, we don't even have a clue what love is. Um, we, our definitions are all screwed up. We love our car. We love our cat. We love our dog. We love that the garbage man picks our garbage up, you know, so that we, we use that word love very, very loosely. And sometimes the terminology gets in the way. Um, you might have to look at, start Googling true love, real love, self-love. I Googled self-love and I was amazed all the beautiful information about self-love, subconscious self-love and self-esteem. It's right there on Google. If you guys want to Google it, it's extraordinary. It'll open a whole channel of different way of thinking. If that would make, be helpful. Go ahead, Tobelin. Did you have anything else? Well, I'm just, I'm I'm wondering, how do you remove that pride? Because I can pride? see ever, ever oh. since I was a child, I've used pride to protect me from those that were supposed to love me. And I had to pull myself away from that or else I'd be abused again. So how do you remove the pride? And I know that you were talking about that earlier, Janet, the, the pride that gets in the middle. Like how, how do you guys have any idea of how to remove the pride? Okay. Yeah, and I think pride could also be protection. You're trying to protect your heart. So you put up these heart walls and these barriers to protect us from being wounded again. So I'm going to let you answer that. That's a really good one. I got woke up out of sound sleep and God said, esteem no man above another. So there you go. Now that's what God said to me. He told me, esteem no man above another. So that means I'm the same as the guy on the street that's a homeless guy. I'm the same as the, you know, the president of the United States or whoever else is the big, big hot shot. There's nobody better than me and there's nobody worse than me. We're all in the same thing. We're all the, you know, we can't call the kettle black. What is that little saying? He said, it, it can't, we can't call something something and it's really when, when you are that that's what you are you're the same i can't say you know you're not water we're all we're all made of water we're all part of the same spirit we're all part of the same of the spirit of god's love we we're created all from the spirit of god's love that's where that's how can we exist we exist because of the spirit of god's love sometimes okay, I well, think I, that, go ahead i said okay i'm curious then like how when a person is used pride and uh, personality protection and is afraid of love and i i've had to learn to love myself definitely i've i mean you can muscle test for me i think i'm doing pretty good okay yeah uh, we'll check we'll check on you right now you okay. got over 50 percent. no you don't you have over 40 percent. no you don't you have over 30 percent. no you don't you have over 20 percent. yes you do you have over 20 percent. congratulations you're twice what most people have 
So you got 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. You're out 26, 27. So you have done quite a lot of work. There's no question you've been doing some good job. Yeah. But right. now you turn it over to the creator who who made you. You'll see you'll grow in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Uh, and ask, ask for it. Um, yeah, just ask for it. I'll tell you an example. I prayed to God for um, to help me make me into a better person. And uh, and I didn't get any answers for a couple, two or three days. And I, I really prayed sincerely to help me be a better person. My roommate said to me, Baker, your problem is you have the spirit of competition. I go, ah, let me see. Call my mom up. Mom, do I have the spirit of competition? Since you were two. Oh, well, there you go. I have the spirit of competition since I was two. So and then I realized, you know, I've been doing this wrong for 50, 60 years. You know, maybe, maybe I ought to, maybe I ought to just get rid of the spirit of competition. And how am I going to do that? So I asked God, I said, no, God, I've been doing this a long time. I'm going to humble myself before, before my creator. I humble myself before him. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to change. So if I'm willing to listen, learn, and change, that basically does away with pride. And uh, the false pride is is a, is not going to help us get where we want to go. So I asked God, and because I was pretty prideful because I'm you know, I'm very, very competitive. I mean, I can throw the ball further than anybody in the school. You know, I can wrestle. I can pin a person with, in a wrestling match. I can pin them within 15 seconds. You know, I was really aggressive and very, very competitive. And maybe I am still. I hope I'm not. But I asked the creator. I said, please take this from me. I felt like it just, just shifted immediately as soon as I asked. So I would say the only what you have to do is just go to the creator. If, this, if you really want this, just ask go to your creator. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, please bless this sweet lady that she can find the place for the true kind of pride, which is pride in you, God, the creator of the universe. And that she is a part of that wonderful love. Be prideful that, that you are, that she is a part of that wonderful love, the perfect love that created all things. Thank you. Thank you, God. That that's the true pride we should have in it is in you and in your gift to us. Thank you, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear God. Awesome. So pray for you, sweetie. And I, I want to reemphasize a couple of points that I feel like Stephen brought out was number one, we've talked about this multiple times throughout this class now is we've got to strip ourselves of the competitiveness, the comparison, the um, criticism. Those are all things that, that we personally have to be conscious about and aware of whether or not we're doing that. And then also meeting people where they are and recognizing that we are one. Exactly. We're, we're the all same. part of the same family. Yeah, we're we're the same as our brothers and sisters that we come in contact with, even even those in our family, those that maybe aren't part of our families that have harmed us and wronged us and and committed evils against us. We're still one. And so that restitution, that resolution has to take place inside of us in order um in order for that pride to be stripped. And I'm sure God will definitely help you with the healing. I promise you he can do that. And he made you, he can create, you, you, you can go to him in on any issue. He says, you ask not, you have not because you ask not. So all you have to do is ask. I promise you get your answer. Yeah, I, I absolutely have total faith you'll get an answer. Cherise mm -hmm. says, Toby Lynn, maybe ask yourself if it's possible to live without pride and still be protected. Yeah, I think that pride really is, because I understand what you're talking about, Toby Lynn. I think we all experience that. We go into this state of protection. We have to put a shell around ourselves so that we won't be hurt or that we won't have our hearts stabbed open anymore by those who are committing the offenses against us. And so um, it, it, it really is, um, it's an act of faith and it's an act of asking. That's a really important component to this. Well, I want to interject just a little quick one. Um, the first thought I have is when we have pride, we're really trying to protect a low self-esteem or a low self-love, low self-worth. This is part of it. It's a, it's a overs. It's like, it's like having lots and lots and lots of money and having no self-value. That's kind of what I'm, I could compare it to yeah. being a billionaire and have no compassion for anyone else, no self-love, you know, so what, what's the billions of dollars do for you anyway? I mean, to make you prideful, you got the nicest car, you got the Rolls Royce, you got this, you got all the, all the stuff on the outside, but you have no love on the inside. Then, then uh, if you had, if you offered me a billion dollars or a million dollars or my self love, I would take the self love, and that's the honest God true story. I promise you that that's the truth for me. 
I would much prefer to have the self-love over a million dollars. If you offer me a million today, I would still take my self-love over the million or millions. I don't care how much it is. Yeah, Cause that's the true value. True value. Um, Shauna says I've used a shield of contempt, which is also pride. I'm still working on putting down that shield and letting the creator be my protection instead. That's profound. Thank you for that, Shauna. Okay, now let's talk about that just for briefly. Again, you get the self-love on the inside, on your self-love, a check on your self-love. Uh, you got over 50%, you don't. You have over 40, 30, you have around 30. So you're doing really well. Um, I don't even know for sure who you're talking Shauna. to. Shauna. Shauna, you have over 30% subconscious self-love. Um, you can be specific and find out for yourself and test for yourself, but I, and it's not that important, I guess, but you can test, but anyway, you're 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, you're around 35. So do you double check, but you have about 35% subconscious self-love. So part of this is to, is to, you're in a way we're trying to cover up something that's inside that we're, we're wanting to hide the part that's inside because we're hurting on inside. Does that make any sense? Sometimes I get real gruff around everybody because I'm not happy. I'm not the happy guy inside. So I'll get real gruff around everybody else. And so it's an overs to be gruff when I'm really this tiny little sweet little thing inside that's hurting, you see? So it's called an overs. Anyway, this is yeah. a thought. Protection. Protection, yeah. Loretta so. says, so I want to make sure I understand each night you ask God to raise your self-love 3% while you're sleeping. Since I need to learn to muscle test in the meantime, can you just trust that it's working? Stephen and Janet, you are both. Yes, yes. Uh, but meantime, who's calling? Uh, this was Loretta. Okay, Loretta, uh, let's just check on your self-love for fun. You got over 50%. You got over 40%. You have over 30%. You have over 20%. You're around 20-something. You, you're getting the same. If you if anyone gets different than me, there's testing for her. Be sure you speak 24. up because we all have to be the same. 21, 22, 23, 24. That's what I got, 24. Yeah. She's definitely strong on 24. Sweetie, you have 24% subconscious self-love at this time. It's going to grow tonight. I promise you that by tomorrow morning, if you ask, we're, we're noticing that almost everybody gets two, 3%. If you get good sound sleep, you get two, I mean, get three. If, you, if you're if you a bad sleeper, you might only get two. But most everybody gets two. But if you're a bad sleeper and, you're, and you stay up all night, my friend that his wife got 100% self-love, he's working on his, but he drove 17 hours straight. Guess what? He didn't grow one single bit of his self-love that night because he spoke, he was awake the whole night, 17 hours, driving all the way to Idaho. I checked on him. He didn't even grow any on his on his trip. Anyway, so that it was a nice little verification that you grow 2 to 3% seems to be the norm. But you could have a life-changing series where God come down and put his arms around you, gave you a big kiss, and all of a sudden you got your 100%. So I'm not saying this is the way it has to be done. I'm just saying this is what we're observing because I'm new at this myself. I can't, I'm no guru. <laughs> but asking is pretty key. Asking. Yeah, absolutely. Key. Asking is a key. And bringing it from a subconscious level into a more, more of a conscious awareness. There you go. I think is really helpful. Right. Somebody also says, so when I sense, there's no name here. When I it's sense okay. that someone disapproves of me, that's when I experience the self-hate. It's ridiculous, but I don't know how to stop my body from feeling the trauma. I'm most afraid of my thoughts. Would you mind praying for me? Yes. Um, dear God, please bless this person. Uh, the criticism is a, is a liar, okay? So what's happening is we're listening to the wrong voices. They're, the world is full of voices, and the liars are wanting people to be miserable. Um, they, they want to drag people down into the pit. It's kind of like the the story about the crabs. Every time the crabs start to climb out of the boiling, boiling water, the other crabs grab them and grab them back into the boiling water. Maybe you've heard the story. Mm -hmm. So dear God, please bless us so we can free ourselves of the crabs and then allow, allow your spirit to, to raise us out of the boiling waters that we're being boiled in this world. You know, get us out of those boiling waters and, 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 and relieve us of the uh, negative entities, the liars and the deceivers I asked you, God, be, to show me how we're going to get rid of this. And, and you told me that the only way to get rid of it is to tell the truth. So uh, let's tell the truth. Um, check on the truth. Always check the truth. The truth is self-evident. We hold the truth to be self-evident. And then you'll know you'll, that this sister will get the truth or whoever's calling, get the truth. And they will have the absolute truth. And then we have this peace and assurance. Thank you, dear God, in the name of Jesus.
Does that help or not? Or did I miss it? I think you're good. If you have any, if I didn't, if I didn't pray the right prayer, let me pray again for you. Just re tell me to repray, and I'll. I'd like to make sure I cover the bases, sweetie, or whoever has called me. Okay. Okay. Um, Minnie asked for us to muscle test her, and I did. Meryl said, "Could you muscle test for me?" Meryl Piper and Pauline Fowler. Okay. Well, I don't like to use people's full names sometimes, but whatever you say. Because we want to keep this. Sometimes people want to have a little bit of space. You know? Yeah, that's true. Anyway, whatever you, you say. Uh -huh. me. Who's, what, what's the question? I can just drop it into the comments box so that it's not actually on the, the YouTube. But it's okay. But I'm just saying. Yeah. It's really good to just use um, really okay. Christian names and things. So go ahead and test for Meryl. Meryl? Okay. Test for Pauline. Okay. Uh, Meryl, um, you have over 50%. Um, this is subconscious self-love. Okay. So you won't, it's kind of like the iceberg underneath. We're looking for that self-love. It's under the, underneath the layer. It's the subconscious. So you have over 50, over 40, over 30, over 20. Uh, yours is, uh, between 10 and 20, 21, I mean, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 18 and 19, 19. I'd have to have a verification. You can check for you. It should be right close to 19, 18 and 19, somewhere right there close. Might even be 18 and a half. Sometimes I can't quite get the word. number might be 18 and a half. Okay, whatever. Just be sure to check in, double check, see if that's correct. I think it's, you'll find it's close to between 18 and 19. Make sure I'm clear too. Always have to make sure I'm clear. It's first important that I clear myself and make sure I have no liars, deceivers, unclean spirits, or evil spirits, and negative entities. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for clearing me because I want to be a clean vessel. I need to get the absolute truth. So make sure I get the right answer. Thank you, dear God. Thank you for clearing me out. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. That's great. Um, gosh, we've got so many pouring in here. Hold okay, on. good. This is, this is, we'll be more than happy to help. Sort through these. We'll help. Um, we'll help in any way we can. Toby Lynn says, what is happening when you rub your head? Okay. Um, um, there's a there's a guy that is a great healer and his name is... Um, um, uh, Bradley Manel, Bradley mom with Bradley, huh? Bradley. Bradley Nelson wrote a book called, um, emotion code. So my mother called me, um, on the telephone some years ago. How many number of years do you think mom about 20 years ago? She said, well, I got it. My neighbor loaned me a book called the emotion code and we're healing up everybody of trapped emotions. Oh, that's nice. I was so happy for mom. I was in Sedona, Arizona, having the best time of my life. And, and my mom's sitting in Missouri. She's a thousand miles away. She says, you know, the neighbor lady told me a book called The Emotion Code. And I'm we're healing everybody trapped emotions. So I go, okay. So the trapped emotions. Um, so in his book, uh, my, I've never heard of it before in my whole life. And she says, can I check on you? So she checks. And they have a, a big chart. And it has all these different trapped emotions. Um grief, uh, sadness, and it's on and on. It's all a, a big chart. And she checks the chart and she says, you have uh, a trapped emotion of grief. Oh, of course I do. My little girl got killed Sunday after church on a log pile. And she's, when she's only five years old, I've been packing grief for 20 years. So I look down and I, right here by my, by my tummy, off to the right, right on this side over here, it's, you'll be your left on the, on the picture, but on my right, I seen a big old ball about the size of a grapefruit and it's kind of a gray khaki color. And I looked down and I seen this big old ball of grief. And my mom says, would you like me to move it? I go, oh, it's like voodoo. <laughs> I didn't have a clue. I never know nothing about this thing. And it started to move. So my mom's moving it over the phone and it's time over here on my shoulder and goes like this. And there goes this grief. And I watched the thing leave. I said, mom, I said, you won't believe it. I just saw a big ball of grief leave. And I knew it's coming back because I had it for 20 years, right? But it never came back. So that's my beginning of my story. And, and then for many years after that, I went through all the emotion code, cleared up all these trapped emotions and uh, got some healing on those. Then I then I got another re revelation came from another lady about um, uh, belief systems, limiting beliefs. Then we went through a fi about 50 limiting beliefs. I had 10 of those. So I've been on this little mission to work all these things out, you see. Does that answer any question? Yeah. So when I rub my head, that's what he does. Put it behind you. See, you take it from in front of you and you move it behind you. So this is the goal. So in the name of Jesus, please move anything that's in front of me that's not good and put it behind me. It's kind of like God said, 
He said he made he made great big huge windshields, but little teeny teeny rear view mirrors. I like that one. I like that too. See, so so they're gonna take it. You can put it in the rear view mirror. See, he said, you're moving it. Be so I put it behind me. See, and it, in his book, he says do it ten or twelve times or seven times. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you feel the shift. And as soon as you come back to a place of love, joy, and peace, now you know for certain it's moved. Yeah. So it's very obvious. You can tell when you've got the movement because you're going to come back to love, joy, and peace. Yeah. Now, fresh breath of air. Let it release. Let it go. Whoop, it's gone. So it feels really good to get rid of it. It does. It really does. You And you can tell when it's gone, too. Yeah. Jesse says, please bless me for the shame and guilt for not helping my son receive the help he needed before accidentally committing suicide. So Ooh, that's the big one. This is the big shame. one. Yeah, let me tell you my little story. The same is very similar to yours. My best friend shot himself while I was on vacation. And I always thought it was my fault. I felt like you know, if I'd been there, I would have seen that's the liar. Okay, so first of all, where are the where where who's talking to you when you feel shame and guilt? You might as well know who's talking to you. It's the it's uh, it's it's the accuser, okay? Uh the, the critter, the old scratch. I use names, all kinds of names for him, but you can call him whatever you want. He he wants everybody to be miserable, and he goes night and day to accuse the saints. That's what it says in the Bible. Um, so the little the little you're getting a lot of heavies from the criticizer. Okay, so he's going to accuse you that you didn't do what you should have done, and you could have, could have, would have, should have fixed this, and should have, could have, would have fixed that. And so there's no should have, could have, would have. It's it is what it is. You did the best you could. Uh, you would hope that you could have changed something, but you can't change it. It's the rearview mirror. It's in the past. So then you're going to need to ask God for some reconciliation. So dear God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this good brother. Or is it, yeah, good brother, that you'll be able to reconcile, that you'll find that your boy is extremely happy where he's at, that he's over there with my daughter named Desiree Ray, Desiree Dawn, and that they, uh, that they have a beautiful life over there and you're extremely happy where they are. There's no, they don't, they have no pains of this world and that they're really, really happy. My little girl said she wanted to go the day she died. I was shocked. I thought I was mad at God for 20 years, but he said, I was shocked. He wanted to go, he wanted out. And it, we just moved from one sphere to the next. It's not, it's not the end of the world that somebody commits suicide. It, in this world, we say it's the end of the world, but it's not. I promise you, it's not the end of the world. So, but anyway, if that'd be helpful, if there's more prayers to be offered, we'll definitely seek God's counsel and pray for you and your and your and your son, because we know he's happy where he's at, and and I feel you know sorrow and grief for you, just like my big ball of grief I carried around for 20 years. But I promise you, it can be you can be relieved, and I pray for God to please give him that relief of that. In the name of Christ, the Son of the Living God, please bless this good brother that he can have find relief. Uh, from this this trauma and recognize that it's okay it's all okay it's just it'll be oh, everything's all right everything's okay thank you dear god in the name of jesus please give him reconciliation and help him to have plenty of self-love that he can get past the the criticizing himself thank you god yeah and you can and grow your self-love again that is for kalinda and for joel okay okay um, we've got lots of people okay. asking for us to test on them. Okay. Um, I actually recommend this because we're out of time, but I recommend that you can reach out to me privately through Facebook Messenger. And I will test with you and we can compare notes and see what you get. Um, my daughter, Paige, I think you missed testing for her, if you don't mind. Um, Paige, okay, we'll do a real quick one. Paige, you got over 50%, you got over 40%, over 30%, over 20% over 10%. Uh, unfortunately, that's pretty low, um, but that's okay. Um, there's We don't know the insides and outs, but uh, Paige is less than less than 10%. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like you're close to eight and nine, which is fine. That's very normal. Don't feel bad. You have eight and nine is, if you haven't done a lot of self-work, it's a very common to have that right in there. It's very common to be eight and nine. So don't feel bad. But God will build you as of this night. You, I promise you, if you'll pray, you'll start growing yours. Yeah. I promise you, you'll start growing yours. Okay. We've got also Bambi would like you to test her numbers. Okay, Bambi. Bandy? Bambi. Oh, Bambi. Okay, Bambi. Um, that sounds like a fun name. 
Um, Bambi, you call yourself Bambi, that's fine. Um, you got over five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, 50, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Well, I got you up to 55. I don't know why, why it's a high. I don't my and maybe it's for some reason. Did you get the same? That's rare. I wasn't testing for her. I was at testing for Juliet, but that's pretty rare. Well, you double check. I may be, maybe, maybe I had some other thoughts about Bambi. I was thinking about the Disneyland Bambi. So I don't, I would kind of was off of maybe not completely on. <laughs> Okay, whatever. It's okay, Bambi. I apologize. I was thinking of Disneyland Bambi, so I, maybe I got a lot of love for self love for Bambi. <laughs> but I was thinking the Disneyland Bambi, so I don't. I may get. I may better get somebody else check for you. I'm. Uh, I'm off on Disneyland Bambi. Sorry, honey. That's awesome. Hey, um, I'm and I, I know everybody loves Bambi, so I know he's got a hundred percent. You have a question. Um, I wanted to see if you could um, say a prayer for me. I have been um, really struggling lately. Um, I have a business. Um, I think I like got burnout and I just, I don't know, I have like these self doubts that are coming in and I just have been doing so much stuff on myself and it just keeps coming back. I'm just really struggling. Okay. That's okay, sweetie. We have compassion for you. Um, remember that the self-love is going to be the best thing as my sister has, I was calling my mom almost every day with the struggle. It was so hard for her. And she's such a sweet girl, but everything was such a struggle till she got a hundred percent. Then she says, you know, the rest of it don't really matter anymore. So I think what you're going to find is it's not up to you to fix this hundred percent. It's the creator who gave you life will help you. Okay. So that's, you got to trust, um, have all the good feelings of trust, the God who gives you breath. The God who gives you life, the God who gave created every beautiful thing in your world, that you can trust him. So that have all the good feelings of trust towards that creator who gave you life. I promise you, you'll be able to grow your self-love. As of tonight, you'll begin to grow it. So I would just pray for you that you'll grow your self-love and that all this outside stuff and the and the and the struggle and the and the, all the other things will uh find a better place. Second to you, because you're number one. The very most important things that you is that you have your own love for yourself and the same love that Jesus has for you, that you feel that that's going to be the number one best thing you can possibly do for yourself. The other stuff, you might have to let it just kind of coast just a little bit until you get and And once you get that, you'll see everything will shift. I promise you, everything will completely shift because that's what it does. Yeah, we've got time for just one last question, and then I'm going to have Stephen just end it on um a positive note like your your final takeaway uh and then we'll let you guys go for the day um somebody asked what is the 300 club i think you've mentioned that but what is that okay the 300 club is actually only a 30-day club oh okay. so we're gonna get you this we we found that almost everybody no matter what their number is in 30 days can grow a uh, 100 self-love and that's if they go to the creator, of course, they got to go directly to the creator because it's not something I give you. It's not something that Janet gives you. Nobody gives it to you. The creator who gave you life gives you this blessing. So all you have to do is ask for it and you shall receive. He says, you, at, you have not because you did not ask. So I just pray for everybody on the phone right now and everybody that hears this, that God will bless them, that they'll come to him, the creator who gave them life, who put the breath of life into their bodies. Who, who loves them beyond anything they ever could imagine, that they will be able to have this beautiful gift. One of the greatest gifts of life is to have the self-love that they need on the inside, on a subconscious level, and that their lives will be full of love and joy and happiness because they're on the vibration of the same, the, of all creation. In the name of Christ, thank you, thank you, dear God. In the name of Jesus, amen. So um, so while I got this, I one night I was... I've been talking, been reading all about Christ's, um, his gift of, of um, compassion, that he has the most compassion of any being in the universe. He's the most compassionate being, uh, I have to promise you, you look in his eyes, he has the most compassion of any being you'll ever imagine. And he's the creator of the universe. And he he's very mindful of all of us. And, um, and, and one night he came in my room at one o'clock in the morning, I felt love in every cell of my body. I couldn't quit weeping. I just wept and wept and wept. 
And I felt love in every cell of my body and every single thing he made, he made with love. And this is what he made us. He made us to be love, love vessels. That's the most important thing. We're all love vessels. And we're, he made us with his love. Every cell of our body is made with his love. And that's the, my final thing to say. Mm, that was perfect. Thank you so much for being here. Can I just give you a hug? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just love you so much. <laughs> it's always, I'm a hug person. I love hugs. It's my love language. <laughs> it's me too. Love is the answer. Love is the root of who you are. Love is where you come from. Mm. Love is who we all are. Right. And love is how we should see one another, including mm. ourselves, because it starts there. Right. To the degree that you love yourself is to the same degree that you will be able to love others. Mm and i witnessed that's truth that's and can truth. we meet mom they yeah. want they want to meet you <laughs> right mom you're on candy camera <laughs> back here and, and, and want she didn't want to be but she has a hundred percent self-love my name is rada baker she has 88 years old raised nine kids uh, she's amazing i was at her house and she was mowing the yard <laughs> putting in a garden so <laughs> all right thanks for being here everybody you guys have a great day and mm -hmm. love you yeah. take care we love you Thank you. Yeah. All right.